sorry, we're the worst. Take us your review today. We're no, eating. I've genuinely forgotten. What are we eating? We're eating meals. Meals. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, American meals. Selection of foods that were popular in America through the last hundred years. Yeah. How fascinating. This is gonna be exciting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just don't know what that means. Meals that are a representation of, of that time period. That's exciting. I, I thought it was gonna be uh, one meal from every year, so it's gonna be 100, <laughs> 100 meals. We'll be here for a while. I'm expecting a very positive, chill, nice, like an assortment of nice meals video. Okay. Are you going to give us, like, you know, like bowls of gruel? Because that's what people were eating 100 years ago. <laughs> Actual plates of food. This That's is a so Caesar exciting. salad. A Caesar salad. A Caesar salad. This is a Caesar salad. How exciting! This is exciting. I this is great. Salad. I love Caesar yeah. salad. Caesar salad is good. Anchovy flavor. Did you know that? But the I only learned that recently. Yeah. They like anchovy grind flavor. up a little anchovy and mm -hmm. make that into their dressing. Chicken, good. Bacon, good. Caesar dressing, great. Yeah. The nineties. Seventies. Something about croutons makes me think <laughs> it's from the seventies. Mm. The food popularized from the Roaring Twenties. It's oh, not yeah. something I'd associate with the 20s, but I don't really think about what they'd eat. I just think about what they drank back then. The 1920s! No way! No way! Since the 1920s, people have been eating Caesar salads? Mm. Oh, That's I, kind of amazing! Yeah! I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't necessary. Mm. I love a Caesar salad. Mm. I like a really, really nice one. Mm. Yeah, this, is, this was invented in uh, 1924 to impress Hollywood people. Are you impressed? I'm very impressed. Yep. Does that mean I'm a Hollywood person yep. if I'm impressed? Hi, Glamour. Yes. I love a nice one when I'm eating out with like chips on the side and like an ice cold glass of white wine. Lately, mm. I've had a weird obsession with Caesar salads. Mm. Oh, like, do you ever have like a fixation food? Mm -hmm. This has been it for a while for me. It's very nice. I don't I've think I've ever had a Caesar salad before. Really? I don't think so. No, I've had one once, but this is literally the second Caesar salad I've ever had in my I life. I don't think I, like, I don't really think to order them. Sometimes when I go to like Tesco and get one of those pre-packaged Caesar salads, it's still good. Like, I I've, never, I've never really had a bad Caesar salad. It's you can have a really good Caesar salad, but like... You can have a really, really good one. It looks like just bacon and chicken. Okay. So I'm like, where's the lettuce? But honestly, that's just the best. <laughs> like, it's just a big bowl of uh, bacon and chicken. I'm like, I love this. I do like all the elements of it. Like, the, uh, the croutons are really nice. Does it feel like something that's uh, kind of old-timey? No. No, it, it really does. It definitely feels like a very... But then again, I, I think it was different Yeah. back then. I think salads in general... Mm -hmm don't strike me as being an old timey type food. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know why I think like the 1920s were like, old, the older days and nobody mm. had any money. So I just wasn't expecting something nice to Something very nice. Lovely. Cool. Well, I just feel like we needed to drink some illegal booze while we were eating that just for the full experience. Ooh. Oh. oh God, that looks bleak. That looks real <laughs> austere. Tuna oh, crackers. tuna and crackers. It's like saltine crackers or something. Tuna on crackers. Okay. Would this be a meal? So what decade do you think this could be? Uh, I'm gonna guess 30s, 30s, 40s. It's just completely plain tuna on a dry cream cracker. Yeah. Oh, that smells nice. It just smells like tuna. The food had in the 1930s. Great right. Great depression. Right. Because I'm depressed right now looking at this. Man, no, well, no wonder people would throw themselves fairness, out of buildings. But in fairness, for the Great Depression, I'm surprised that there was protein. Did you enjoy, uh, I suppose, accoutrements on crackers? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love tuna. Accoutrements on crackers. A huge amount of like the, the kind of the food storage and pres pre preservation that we have today. We can honestly thank the American military complex for that. Yeah, it is very handy. This is actually uh, made of a leather boot. <laughs> <laughs> I like tuna, but... I thought you were going to say, I like a leather boot. <laughs> Pretty sure, like the expiry date on usually a lot of tuna cans are like two or three years. That's the food that you need to stock up for the apocalypse. I'd rather die. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit bland because it's just tuna on a cracker. Mm. I'm fine with it. Tuna crackers. <laughs> Don't judge me. But it's good. It reminds me of that thing I made you in our cocktail video. No, I love that. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah, happy out. It's like a meat, a canned meat on a cracker. Fine. I love tuna. Yep. It's just two really dry things. Very dry. Someone looked at crackers and thought, how can we make these drier? <laughs> Would it be a go-to meal for me? Not really, but I do like things on crackers. Tuna on its own, I find very dry. It can be. Mm. Flavorful, it's protein, salt. Love it. I really don't like cooking, so like out of pure resistance to putting any effort in, if I was home alone, I would eat this now, even with more options in the house. Even if, if I was at death's door, you know, I hadn't, hadn't eaten for weeks and someone said, here, have this tuna on a cracker. I'd probably be like, I'm out. Oh, this is what 
of my favorite things. I'm so excited. What is it? This is a prawn cocktail. Y'all like prawn cocktail? I'm not a big fan of fish. I know that people have like said that before in the comments, like I should be ashamed of myself. Um, but I'm not. I'm not a seafood fan. But you need to have the prawns hanging awkwardly off. <laughs> uh, you could do. These are very small prawns. Oh yes. Adore a prawn cocktail. Now, was it massively popular in Ireland and then became a little bit naff? Yes, it was like the go-to 90s starter and still is in many Irish households. I will say though that my grandfather was a big fan of prawn cocktail. Really? Yeah, a really big fan. I adore it and actually would order this now if it was on a menu. Really? And I love that you've served it in a cocktail glass, which is how it's supposed to be served. What is a prawn cocktail? So it's Mary Rose sauce. Okay. Which is, I believe, um, a mix of ketchup, mayonnaise, and a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper. Okay. God, why do I know all these things and I don't cook? Am I yeah. right? This is a dish popularized in from the 1960s. Oh. You've picked such a wide array of meals. Like, why did you pick this? Do See, not question his creative direction. <laughs> I believe traditionally, you now it's supposed to be sipped. Get out. That's, no, that's too thick. <laughs> no. All right, let's go. No. Mm. It's not terrible. I don't know what I was expecting a prawn cocktail to taste like, but it was very prawny. This is really nice. I feel like I've had this one before. I am so pleasantly surprised. <laughs> you are the opposite. I actually thought, <laughs> no. <laughs> I like prawns, but those little prawns are not my favorite type of prawns. This is something my dad would always have in the fridge and we would eat it together with a fork. Is that a lesser deep fried? To be fair, I don't like prawns in general either, but this is kind of changed my mind. I'm really? all right with this, yeah. Back in the day in Ireland, this is this was a real popular starter at Christmas dinner. Well, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Not that we had stars at Christmas dinner, it was just straight in there. Mm -hmm. I think I would substitute the prawns for uh, for like better prawns. Yeah, but like it but does it, it does the job. Absolutely. I would rather I think... the huge ones. Yeah, I, that was fine. I like that. Good, I'm happy for you. You did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a fan. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Is this tiramisu? Yes! Oh my, is this tiramisu? Tiramisu. Never had tiramisu. Oh, it's lovely. This is a tiramisu. Nah, this is so good. Is it's not, not like Italian. This? Yeah, I love tiramisu. These are very like fancy meals. So isn't this like a coffee? It's Italian, so it's like lady fingers soaked yeah. in coffee. Yeah. And some sort of alcohol. But but was it popular in America, I wonder? I wouldn't expect that these are Amer like come from America. No, no, no. Tiramisu was invented in Northern Italy. But it's more that they're popular in America. In the early 1980s, tiramisu became a major dessert preference in almost every Italian restaurant and bakery in New York City. Most restaurants stick to the original recipe, but always have their own variations. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm surprised how coffee that is. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, it's like a liquor, like mm. a coffee liqueur. It's a lovely dessert. And it's one that I often order, and I'm not a massive dessert gal at the end of the mm. meal. I'd often have a cocktail or a cheese board. So much coffee, it's feel like you've just done a shot. Mm. Yeah. It's so nice. That is so good. So mean. Oh, God. I'm not a big coffee guy, so mm. I def definitely would never be my first choice. But it is tasty. It's like creamy. I love it. You know, it's good that when you put your fork into it, coffee just <laughs> seeps out from the bottom of it. Is it better than the prawn cocktail? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Better than prawn cocktail, but I'm a dessert person. I'm a sweet Sorry. tea fan. Is this chocolate, coffee, creamy, alcohol cake better than the fish we served with ketchup? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's on par with me with the likes of banoffee. I love, I love bananas. I'm not a big fan of banoffee. You either. don't like banoffee? What the hell? <laughs> I, don't, is I don't mind so it, but it wouldn't be my, my number one choice. Oh my god, it's so good. Would you like to be transported back to the '80s to have a little tiramisu? There's probably other things I'd go back to the '80s for. Drugs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Oh, that looks really heavy. I'm Did so I ever tell you how much I love the <laughs> Try Channel? <laughs> when was chocolate cake popular? Did you heat this up in the microwave? The 1990s. Oh my God, this is warm. 1990s. You put this in the microwave. Oh, it's hot. I can smell that it's hot. A warm chocolate cake. Isn't that just the sexiest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> Do you know oh, what this reminds me of? The Bruce Bob Trotter cake and Matilda. <gasps> oh my God, yes. And like, Brucey, Brucey. I do love the chocolate cake, but I will say it wouldn't be my first order on a dessert menu where I've so, oh my God, I can't pick it up. Was this just when Matilda was a thing? Oh Ch yeah. Chocolate cake came Boris real big. Bob Trotter. Yeah, it had, its, it had its moment in the 90s. But I have the a printout of Bruce Bob Trotter covered in chocolate no on way. my wall. And it's like, you can do it, Brucey. Oh <laughs> like my like motivational God. poster. <laughs> When he like licks the glass plate and then holds it up over yeah. his head. What a moment. I know. Like, it's oh. It's really, really good. I'm not a big- It's very sweet. 
Yeah, it is but very sweet. That's what I would be expecting that yes. for a chocolate cake. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Chocolate cakes have existed, I would say, for centuries. Mm -hmm. So why is it that the 90s that they're yeah. just so ubiquitous? That, that is so nice. I don't even know if I chewed that. I think it just slipped down oh, my stop. throat. I'm a brownie guy. If there was a choice between a chocolate cake like this and a nice fudgy brownie, fudgy brownie, it wins every time. That's the best though, isn't it? It's so mushy mm. and soft and melty. Oh my God. I, yeah. I don't think you can assign chocolate cake to anyone no. in particular. You can't even assign this to one century, I would say. No. Some chocolate cakes you can get and it's all just like brown icing and it's just kind of gross. But like that was, that was genuine, regu like genuine chocolate. Like. I have like the sugar tingles from mm. the desserts. Any cake that looked like a chocolate cake before the 1990s <laughs> was actually a Madeira cake that they had just dyed brown. Oh, fair. Yeah. Happy with the cake? So happy. The so happiest happy. people. The happiest so people. Good. Is it my birthday or something? Yeah. Having a good day. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> to whoever's watching this, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. happy birthday. It's fun seeing the meals that were popular at different eras, but the yeah. one that felt the most American was definitely the chocolate cake. That felt very like all yeah. American vibes. I see why it was popular. I really liked the tiramisu. Yum. Yeah. I haven't had tiramisu in ages. We've really gone. Obviously, well, I think obviously the worst. I don't want to speak for you, but I think the worst. It's probably safe to say was the tuna on cracker. It was. I love having something that has like a, a historic, like you yeah. know the background of it, a story. I think yeah. that's really cool. Like eating something with a story is always cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, loved it. Thank you so much for watching the video. <laughs> Enjoyed us trying some cool American foods throughout the history of America in the last hundred years. Make sure to like it. Yeah. Like the video. If yeah. you watched this and you liked it and you laughed at least once, you, you, you like the video. That's the rule. That's the rule.